tasty, tasty, tasty. Who wouldn't love that? June 5th, 2022. That was Boss Sounds. Or a handle named Boss Sounds. Night Dance. Or Freaky Girl. Original mix. Free download. Seven years ago. Seven years ago. But, um... Kind of an interesting little... Uh, that's the magic of SoundCloud. If you haven't been into the magic of SoundCloud, I welcome you tonight to journey, take that first step into the magical SoundCloud. Uh, what's going on today? A quick little stargazer. Just look up the stargazer here real quick, real good. Is that up a little too close there, Larry? Okay, get you up there real good so you can see that. So, and it says here in the Pocket Astrological Constitutional Astrologer, or the Pocket Astrology Constitution, but it says here, uh, yesterday Saturn went retrograde, which your guess is, is it probably means that we're selling more weapons to the Ukraine and one step closer to a nuclear holocaust in World War, I call it four, I think three's already happened. And then it says, Shav, Shavo begins at sundown. So again, I'm totally ignorant on that one. Shavo, isn't, wasn't that Somer Chavez, you know, Walter from the Big Lebowski? Remember, John Goodman is the Walter character. And he was always celebrating some fake ceremony or holiday that didn't exist. Wasn't it Somer Chavez? Somer Chavez, dude. I don't roll. Somer Chavez, did well Somer Chavez started and then today it looks like we quick clicked in the moon is in Virgo so um, anything could happen in Virgo and probably I anticipate a fireball the size of a bus no, 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 no I'm not I'm not all full of doom and gloom but my heart is heavy my heart is heavy uh, I was watching Portland Oregon's People's Republic of Portland, Oregon, somewhere down there. She was the rogue police chief, outlaw, Miss Outlaw. I always thought she was classy. I really do. I think she was misunderstood, and she was in a volatile, hostile environment. Um, more women than men, but it could have been men having problems with a lady boss. I don't know. I mean, you know the gun culture and the police culture better than I do, really. It's not my department. But I do know psychology. And I know psychoanalysis. You know psychoanalysis? I met him one night. It was late night. And crazy motherfucker. But I do want to address, briefly, I want to address how to interact with law enforcement. How to interact with the police, police officer, peace officer, police officer, cop, state patrol, um, federal agents are really in another zone because they do whatever the fuck they really want. I mean, let's be honest. The DOJ, we lost the DOJ, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know that, Jesus. And you probably think I'm the conspiracy nut. And I, I am, actually. Openly an analysis. Analyze it. But you never know what the feds. And they're probably going to kill you if they want to. With or without a warrant. <laughs> right? Because I'm against no-knock warrants. I think it endangers officers, and I think it clearly endangers people uh, who may have a new homeboy, a new boyfriend who has a pistol and, and in bed, like we saw with Rest in Peace, uh, uh, Brianna. Brianna? It's Brianna, wasn't it? And... Uh, that note, that's a perfect example of how things go wrong. In fact, they always go wrong, don't they? And then we got them on video, and maybe they don't always go wrong. But you're operating on another level. But these same principles that I'm going to discuss briefly, instead of this being out some long, drawn-out, crazy video, my camera won't even let me do a video that long. It'll shut me down whenever it wants. It's very interesting. Here's to you, Kodak. <laughs> But uh, is you want to remain calm and don't make any sudden movements. So if you're in a car, don't 
look down, don't reach down, don't go into the hand, don't try to shuffle your pistols into the glove box or anything funky. Funky. Don't make any movements. But if you are not, and you're just standing there and you're dealing with the police, don't put any sudden, don't put your hands into your pockets or into a jacket. No quick, sudden movements. Mention or even ask if you can reach in to get something or, or, or just stand there. And it's good to raise your hands up. And it seems like a joke, but I'm telling you right now, this is how you stay alive with a police encounter. 50 years old, I've had a number of police encounters. I've had a couple of resisting arrests I'm not proud of. Thank God the police didn't kill me. They could have. And, and, and one time I had some fractures on my feet. I don't blame the police because I was resisting arrest. And um, they're still motherfuckers. And, and my, my foot's still fucked up. You know, 30 years later. This is 30 years ago. Shit goes down. I don't blame the police at all. You have to take responsibility for your actions. And, and the sooner you do it, the better off you're going to be. Don't do any sudden movements. Hello, police officer. What can I do for you? Don't be mad. Don't be angry. I mean, this is... I can tell... Just by reading the death toll every weekend that there's a whole bunch of you motherfuckers out there. They don't really care whether you die in a police encounter or not. As a matter of fact, dozens of you are dying in police encounters every weekend. So I'm noticing a pattern, right? I'm not an expert, at least not until KGW News calls and says, Larry, you're an expert, right? And you see Right. Uh, or something like that, right? It's like some goofball stoned out professor at PSU and he's now an expert of fucking what? I don't know, but butt sizes? I, the analysis of people, Portland, flowers? Quite a salary at PSU. But uh, God bless these people. You want to stay alive, you don't do any sudden movements. And it's the same type of thinking if you're in a bar it's not just the police. If you want to stay alive with other people, if you want to get out of the building where there's plenty of guns, and I've been in those buildings, we all have, uh, there's guns just about everywhere you have to assume, but when you know that you're in an environment where everyone's protecting themselves in self-defense, whether it's a club, usually clubs, usually nightclubs, usually after hours fun. We saw in Philadelphia what after hours fun can do sometimes with the wrong psychological player. Damaged goods. It's either got to be narcissism. you got such extreme focus and love on yourself. You can't see that firing rounds out of a moving vehicle is going to take down some other casualties. If you don't have that in your heart, you're a sociopath. And you probably should be removed from general population. There's a special place. You're going to have 23 hours to yourself to pick up drawing. I did. You know, not in jail, but I'm ready for a, tr I'm ready for a big, long stench in the, in the slammer because, boy, I don't know, I'll, draw, I'll just draw all day long. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Art is therapy. And that is exactly how you balance and find inner peace, is through that art, through that craft. Music, big one for a lot of people. Um, again, you tend to have the spotlight, you tend to, you can get into narcissism bubbles, it's, it's, it's a slippery slope. You gotta, gotta do some, gotta do some body checks, head check, head check. You gotta check yourself, keep yourself in, in, in the zone. I, it, it's important. But I'm alive today by the grace of God. Go why? For sure. But I also narrowly survived or escaped life-threatening situations on several encounters, including police. And the mistakes I made is how I can tell you what not to do and the best way to do it. And it's no sudden movements. One of the things I like to do is I like to get out of the car. And... I still do it today. It, it, it's not funny. It's a, it's, I mean, one of these guys is just going to cap me because they're so scared today. 
But I, I don't like being in the car. I don't like sitting in the car, and, and it's, it's just, it's kind of stressful. Um, but uh, for reals. And so I like to just open the door and get out of the car with my hands up. With my hands up. Now, don't do this because the police are going to think, I don't know, this is my technique. It may be not a technique, but it's just something I do in cars if I'm a passenger. Not if, not if I'm the driver. The driver, I, I, I guess I'd ha I've handled it differently. Um, but uh, so anyway, I do that. And I put my hands up. So you, you, you want to just follow instructions. I'll tell you to get back in the car. And, and so, or, or, you know, I don't know. It could be worse. But uh, they'll usually give you commands. And so you got to follow the, the commands. You know, it's important to do that. And it's important to have basic respect for people, I think, really. You know, that's what really concerned me the most in 2020 when I saw the social geoengineering of this uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, anarcho-communist kind of Antifa, if you want to brand it that way, although that's what they have self-identified with and, and made websites and redirect to the White House in some cases. But... Um, not really the point of, of origin. I, I was simply saying during that time, we had hundreds of people killed. Hundreds of people died with all kinds of gun violence and people on people, people killing police. During all of this time, that sets a horrible precedent to the younger people. Their minds are absorbing that. And we're seeing that now a couple years from now. And we're going to continue to see it for a couple more years and three years down the line. Just that violence and the ripple effects from 2020, 2020, summer of rage and hate, violence. And that attacking the police, doing completely inhumane things, trying to burn them alive in their own buildings here in Portland. I mean, that's sociopathic. That's psychotic behavior. To say that that's okay, like the Democrats did in Portland, is crimes against humanity. It's shameful and pitiful and disgusting. It's deplorable behavior. Most of Americans believe that. And that's what makes the Portland Democrats special. See, they're very, very special, Portland Democrats. Because they stick together, Multnomah County Democrats, Portland Democrats, and they'll cover each other up just like any other kind of a union. Just like the bad apples in a police department going to cover, you know, the good guys end up covering up the bad apples, unfortunately, because it's that camaraderie. It's not just the police. We're seeing it with the teachers union. We're seeing it with other organized uh, operations in the city of Portland and Multnomah County. So it's a part of politics, and you just have to understand that. And so... You, you have to realize that there's politics in the police force as well. And these, a lot of these guys, people, ladies, I don't really know the, late, the, the female officer's psychological breakdown as well as I think I have followed it over the last couple of decades, decades of the men, that kind of men, that man psyche. It's, it's you know, you, if you challenge them, then they're going to feel challenged and they're going to destroy you. They're going to break some fingers, break some feet. That's not okay, but it's a part of that power struggle. I understand that. And so now, you know, uh, I follow instructions. It's, I'll even, if it's the right, if, if, I'll even say sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Um, one thing, though, if you do have, if you're in a vehicle, one of the things, this is a very important part, one of the things that I ha have come to come to light, some things that have come to light on Portland crime or Portland uh, police interactions is that there is a new law that was passed by the state legislator that said police officers don't chase and pursue cars. And so that, we're seeing tons of this happen and the police are very rarely going after pursuit. So this is what I've seen happening, and that explains why we're, we're not seeing much movement on the same type of players, same type of usual suspects, um, in some cases, that are doing the same repeat patterns, like rats in a maze from one part of Portland to the other part of Portland, and it's pop, pop, pop in between if there's anything that looks like trouble. 
So, and I'm not totally sure. I would really like a public presentation. I think we owe that. I think we're owed that. I don't know what kind of covert, coveted, in, inside intel of, of whatever kind of people are working undercover. Who knows if there's even a budget